Hello everyone! Here's a short tutorial on turning your topography lines into a 3D topographic surface and how to carve a channel into that surface. Drag and drop your DWG into Rhino and select Insert File. Follow the prompts until you can click to drop in your referenced AutoCAD file. First, make a copy of your original topo and the lines that represent the channel. Switch to your perspective view. Then select the boundary and all lines that represent the channel and hide these objects. The topo should be the unedited, unpulled version, but you should still include all of the interpolated 20-foot contours. Select all of the contours except for the lowest one and move the rest of them vertically 20 feet. We can see that these topo lines are now vertically 20 feet apart. Now deselect the next lowest topo and move the rest of them 20 feet up. Continue this process across your entire square paying attention to whether each topo line should be moved vertically in the positive direction or vertically in the negative direction. You should now have all of your lines in space that represent your topography surface. Select all of your curves and use the patch command. Use the settings on screen and press OK to generate a surface from your moved topo lines. You should now have a surface that is representative of the topography in your assigned square. Show your hidden geometry, select the boundary of your individual square, and use the extrude curve command to extrude this on both sides, up and down, until it intersects with the patched surface. Use these two objects to trim against each other. Use the extruded rectangle to trim away the excess of the patched surface. You now want to move your channel lines vertically so that they intersect with the patched topography surface. Move all three of these lines from where they exist vertically to the lowest point on the topo that coincides with where this channel is. Because of the overall sloping nature of most of these topo surfaces, the bottom of the channel will also have a slope to it. Select all three of the representative lines and use the explode command to turn these three lines into six lines. Select the lower three lines and press F10 to turn on all the control points for this line. Select the three control points that represent the higher version of this sloped portion of the channel and move these points vertically up until they intersect with where they should be on the topo surface. 
You can verify this by looking at the channel and the topo overhead and snapping to the corresponding topo line. Select the remaining three channel lines and move them vertically until they snap with the sloped lines that you completed in the previous step. Press F10 again and select the highest three points that represent the upper portion of the channel and move these vertically until they snap with the topo line that represents the highest elevation of the channel. Temporarily hide the surface so that we can model the geometry of the channel. Select all of the outlines and join them back together. Select both of the boundaries that represent your channel and copy these vertically 80 feet up and 80 feet down. We will use these as guidelines to model the channel as a solid surface. We are now going to construct this channel one surface at a time using the surface tools, specifically surface from three or four control points. Click on the triangle next to the surface creation tool. and click on the first command and snap to each point that will represent a vertical surface in this channel. Do this for all four of the vertical surfaces. This channel should be represented as taller so that when we use this to trim away the overall topography, we have enough geometry to work with. Be consistent with the corners that you snap to, and be careful to not crisscross certain corners, or you will end up with an unworkable surface. Repeat this command for the remaining two surfaces that represent the sloped bottom of your channel. Join all six of these surfaces into one polysurface with the join command. You can now show your hidden topography surface to verify that your extruded channel 
intersects where it should and that there is sufficient geometry above the topo surface to interact with. Select the extruded channel and use the trim command to trim away the topography that exists on the inside of the channel. With this topography cut in two pieces, select one piece to trim away the excess vertical surface of the channel on one side. And do the same operation with the other piece of topography to trim away the excess vertical surface of the channel away from the topography. You should now have three pieces. Two pieces of topography with a channel trimmed out in the middle and the channel itself. Join these three pieces together into one complete surface. Some topographies are more complex than others but you should generally have a result that looks like this, with a solid 80 foot wide and 80 foot deep channel cut into the surface of your topography square. Select this carved topo surface and make another copy off to the right. Use the bounding box command with all default sub options to create a box around this surface. With the topo surface still selected, enter contour for the contour command. Snap to a bottom corner of this created bounding box and then snap to the corresponding top corner of the selected bounding box and type in 20. Right now the distance between contours says 40 but this includes the interpolated curves so type 20 and press enter and watch Rhino draw your contours for you through the modeled surface. You can compare these lines with the pulled topo lines that you've done in AutoCAD to verify that you've modeled it correctly. These topo lines created from the contour command will not be joined, so be sure to join them together. You will also use these lines to create your, your laser cut model.